I think the, the web is a fantastic place for students to explore, uh, to be creative, to play, and to learn. What's important for universities, I think, to remember is that a lot of times the technologies that we use for teaching and learning are what I would call walled gardens, which is where you essentially put students in a box and you say, do your work in here, and it just happens to be digital. You'll you know, uh, upload assignments or, or uh, go to a grade book. Uh, but the walled gardens don't really allow for the outside world to come in, and they don't allow for the students to interact with the open web. At Stanford, many of our professors have been thinking about ways in which the open web provides the kinds of connections they want their learners to have. And I can give a couple of examples of that. Uh, one is that uh, this notion of personal cyber infrastructure where you're giving students a, a piece of the web to, to use certain kinds of tools or the tools that they want for learning and connecting with others. Uh, we have faculty who are very interested in that. And particularly in places where um, Faculty want students to look at a topic for multiple disciplinary lenses. As students are participating in these different disciplinary viewpoints of the same topic, their work can be contributing to a learning hub on that topic. And so there are lots of uh, interesting synergies that students will experience when they're looking at my work when I'm studying biology versus the work of a sociology student, and how do those work together and how might I learn from that. A slightly different project, but one that again I think really leverages the power of the web and the power of having communities of learning on the web is one called Lacuna Stories. And this is a project that my office helped to fund and so uh, we have been watching it very closely as it developed. This comes out of a professor and several docs, doctoral students and a few technologists out of our um, comparative literature group. And what they wanted students to be able to do is to go online and read digital text from a variety of different sources on a particular topic. So in this case, the very for first course that they did was on the topic of 9-11, September 11. And so students were, were asked to read different texts uh, related to that event. The Lacuna Stories Project allows for uh, what I would call kind of crowdsourced annotations, leveraging the fact that as a community of learners studying the same pieces of writing, you can take very different interpretations uh, and learn from those and understand those. The other really cool thing about Lacuna is that it allows these students to thread together narratives from multiple sources. I think that really leverages the notion of what, what can the web do that might be maybe difficult to do face to face or that really allows for a community to come around uh, and reflect and engage with digital media and texts. One of the trends I've seen in MOOCs at Stanford is early on when we were first experimenting, a lot of faculty took essentially their Stanford course or some kind of variation of it and put it online and made it openly available. And one thing I'm noticing now over time is Faculty are really designing these MOOCs for the public audience rather than just for Stanford students. Uh, they are often designing them to accomplish some kind of mission that might be different than what they would hope their students at Stanford get out of it. We've actually talked to a lot of MOOC learners about why they take MOOCs and several of them have said, you know, it replaces my Wall Street Journal in the morning. It's just some other way I get information. Uh, we talked to several new mothers who said, I'm out of the workforce, I'm caring for a baby all day. Really, a MOOC just keeps me connected to things and helps me feel intellectually engaged, it gives me something to talk to my partner about. Uh, so there is a huge appetite, I think, broadly speaking, for expertise and knowledge and opportunities to learn. And so what I think MOOCs provide kind of in response to that appetite is exactly that. When we've talked to faculty at Stanford about why they've done MOOCs, why they've wanted to do MOOCs, many of them talked about extending or broadening the impact of their research, of their work. And I think that's a really great uh, synergy with the, the desire, the appetite that people have for that.